I'm Max Hamburger. I have the privilege in a second of uh, inviting Alan Epstein to come up onto the stage to do this presentation. Uh, Alan is a good friend and uh, secondarily associate professor of medicine at the University of Pennsylvania, maybe the other way around. Um, just want to express um, my gratitude to uh, David McLean for uh, the seventh year in a row of giving us the opportunity to take CME content that we worked on uh, and present it to you as a uh, sort of a satellite symposium here at this meeting. We've been working on the content for this afternoon's presentation since last October, trying to identify the elements of a presentation that would bring you new information and useful information on the spondyloarthropathies and hopefully send you home with new information, but also send you home with some things to think about what are you going to do uh, on Monday morning when you start to see these patients in the office because there are many, many questions that I think that we, we have to ask ourselves as a subspecialty. It's a particularly challenging area. So we very much look forward to your comments and feedback. Um, this is the first time that this content will be seen, but it will then be seen again in about a half a dozen state society meetings over the next uh, six months. So uh, please uh, give us your feedback, um, how to go, what you like, and what can we do better uh, so that we can make sure that the other rheumatologists who see this down the road uh, find it a, <coughs> excuse me, a valuable program. So without further ado then, Alan, thank you for coming and look forward to the talk. So thank you very much. Um, before getting started, let me throw out a few thank yous and then an apology, and then we'll get started. So the thank yous are first uh, to Max and Joe Grisante, who many of you met yesterday uh, at the Thieves Market for their help in the preparation of these, uh, this deck. And I also think we all need to particularly thank David and Pam McLean for a wonderful, wonderful meeting uh, this year. So. Then a small apology. Let me just tell you a little bit about the binder. So there are 120 slides or 119 slides in the binder. I'm not going to present 119 slides. So there are going to be some slides that are there for completeness that are, are not going to be discussed. And there are going to be a few that are rearranged uh, relative to what's in the binder. But it's not going to be a wholesale rearrangement. It's just going to really be a few slides that I've moved up or back because they seem to fit better uh, given the way I rearranged uh, the deck. But should be able to follow most of it without too much difficulty. So some thanks. Uh, this program was uh, funded by grants from AbbVie, Amgen, and Janssen, and we thank them. And as Max mentioned, it's a somewhat of a satellite symposium. So the, um, the CME is done a little bit differently. This is accredited by Virginia Commonwealth University, who also accredits the, the main CCR program. It's also co-sponsored by Miller Professional Group. It's uh, worthy of one and a half uh, CME credits. But in order to get that, you need to fill out the evaluation and the CME request form that are in the binder and turn them in to the desk outside the door on my left and on your right uh, looking forward. And one last thing is that those of you who are here may very well get an email from the organizers of this asking for some feedback in terms of the applicability of this to your private practices and uh, do not be surprised, and the, that request is going to come from roomreply at gmail.com. So with those comments, why don't we then get started? These are my disclosures. So all of us who see patients in the office see lower back pain on a daily basis. It's estimated that 50% of our population experience back pain in a given year, and since it's not the same 50% of people every year, in a matter of a few years, almost everybody experiences to a greater or lesser extent pain in their lower back. 80% of the population may experience acute pain at some point in their lifetimes. And then the question is, though most of that is mechanical, when is it inflammatory? And fortunately, we have a little bit of help in that regard from 